So originally, the PlayStation 2 came with these composite cables. Now this is the lowest quality you can get out of the PlayStation 2. All the video uh, was coming out of the yellow cable and the audio was coming out of the red and the white. But you want to put them aside because the next step uh, for better quality was the RGB SCART. Now these are probably the best for CRT TVs. The quality is definitely better and sharper so the image looks um, even clearer. But the PlayStation 2 can actually use the PS3 component cables. Now with these I'm sure you remember these for the HD screens when they first came out. All the video was coming out for the red and the green and the blue, which actually gives a better video quality and enabled us to actually um, experience the, uh, HD for the first time. Now, before you plug your component cables into your TV, you want to make sure you head to your system settings here. And if you go to your video output configuration, here we go, you want to make sure that your component video out is not set to the standard RGB, as this is the composite and the RGB SCART settings. To make sure you get a signal coming out, you want to use the other settings as seen here. Now, if I show you a copy of the PlayStation 2 game, um, you will see that they don't indicate if they can utilize or use the component cables which is a bit of annoying but if I just fire up now a copy of Tekken 4 you will see now that it gives you three options and these are 50 Hertz 60 Hertz and a progressive For an example, let's start this game in 50 hertz. Now this is the standard um, output a lot of us use back in the day, especially for us PAL users. Um, now, I'll just select the character. Now we used uh, Tekken 4 because this actually gives you those three video output options. Round one. Now, I don't know if you notice, but um, with 50 hertz, it actually drops the frame rate of the game. So you're losing about 10 to 20 frames of gameplay. So the game feels a bit slow, a bit sluggish. Welcome. Now, we're going to start this Welcome. game with 60 hertz. So now this is utilizing all the frame rates given to this game. Fight. Don't know if you already noticed, but it does seem to run a lot quicker, more responsive. Yeah, she had it coming. Now I'm going to select this game in progressive mode. Now you can only select this when you got those component cables in. So now this is using the component feature and it's got those full frames using the 60 hertz output. I don't know if you already noticed, but the picture quality basically is double the information of the output of the video. So the picture seems a lot clearer and a lot sharper. You win. Now with just a selected handful of games in the PAL region, this is a copy of Resident Evil 4. Now this doesn't give you progressive op option uh, in the um, game menu or um, actually uh, boot up but you can actually force this game into progressive mode by simply holding down the X and triangle as it boots just give it a good three seconds and on screen you will see this it will prompt you to um, select if you wanted progressive mode and bam there it is 
So this is double the information and it's got your 60 hertz with full frame rates. Now here's another example how to get progressive mode at your games. Here's a PAL copy of Tekken 5. And now I'm just going to quickly show you the options menu. And display settings and you'll notice it gives you some options. It gives you the screen ratio 16 by 9 which is for widescreen and then the video mode. So you can choose it from 50 to 60 hertz. Now 60 hertz actually be the better choice because giving you giving you those extra frames. But now we'll head to the um, NTSC version, the American copy of the game. Exactly the same game. So it gives you the screen ratio. Uh, but with video mode, you can actually select progressive. So with some titles, it's actually better to buy the um, the overseas copy. And here's what it looks like: full 480p, 60 hertz. Now, if you're interested in a modern unit, and I'll tell you the benefits later, you need a few things. This is a, a network adapter, and this actually is a GameStar one from Amazon. Utilizes a SATA connector, so it's cheaper to get your hand on the hard drives. This is just a simple 180, I think 180 or 120 gigabyte hard drive that you can slot in the back, like so, and that goes in the back of the unit. This is a uh, SATA to USB. Now this is able you to plug into a PC and this will be like an external hard drive. So you can drag your ISOs to the hard drive, which is the disk image of your games. Third thing you need for your setup is a PS2 memory card, which we, we all know what that is. And lastly, this is the Bluetooth receiver. Now this is to utilize your PlayStation 3 controller for wireless support. Just to quickly mention, if you wanted to use the remote on function, so you can just turn it on straight from your couch, uh, here's a DVD remote. Now with the silver model, you will notice it's a bit different. It's got the reset on and even the eject disc mode. Now they are a bit different, so keep an eye out. I did this error. Um, so here's the silver model that you need to look out for. So if you guys have got your PS2 modded, here you go, you can actually select your output settings. So, with GCM, you can select your video output mode in different resolutions. But here I am selecting it into 480p, which is the most user-friendly with these games on your PS2. Now I'm just booting up the Grey DS5 ISO. Now also, you can actually mod your ISO images. And I've modded this to have 16x9 widescreen mode. So this is 40, 480p with widescreen which you cannot do if you just put the disc in. So that's one of the benefits, the well, main benefits that I actually use in my um, modded PS2 for. So here's the game, Absol looks absolutely great. Using the 16 by nine widescreen, which the original game didn't actually have as an option. Now with these games that um, didn't have widescreen in mind when building them, you will notice on the sides, both left and the right hand border, that there are some pop-ups. That doesn't really personally bother me because it actually fills up your entire screen. But if you're okay with that, that's absolutely brilliant. So thanks for watching this video, I do hope this inspired you to pick up your PlayStation 2 console and to make more of your system and also to make them look better and run better onto your LCD and HD screens. And I'd just like to apologise for any of the video or audio quality, as I said this is my first video and I'd just like to kick things off. So if you'd like to support this channel and me, just simply like this video and hit the subscribe button and leave your comments below and I'll catch you guys on the next video.